Welcome everybody, thank you for joining. My name is Tamar Krasnow. I am the Vice President of New Development at MNS. Um, and MNS is the exclusive sales and marketing company for 567 Ocean Avenue, which is a project that we launched um, just a few months ago. Um, so I just wanted to quickly um, add a little disclaimer that this webinar is being recorded. Um, your faces do not show up. Um, and if I'm using names, I will only use your first name. Um, so that's just a quick disclaimer there. Um, I will give, so by the way, um, please answer our trivia poll and I'll give you those answers in a minute. Um, but I first just wanted to introduce our panelists for this evening. Um, first, we have David Chi. He is an associate broker with MNS, and he is one of our on-site agents at 567 Ocean Avenue, and he happens to be sitting in our sales gallery this evening. Um, we have Mark Friedman with Citizens Bank, and we have Peter Young from Young and Associates. Um, so he's our attorney um, on this panel this evening. Um, so before I let you guys, let me see how many people we've got. Um, let's just go through these exciting uh, poll questions and then I'll let um, David, Peter, and Mark give their own little intros. Um, so which one of these films did not have scenes filmed, filmed in Prospect Park? The answer is American Gangster. So good for all of you because no one answered that. Um, so good job. Smurfs movie and Wolf of Wall Street did have scenes filmed in Prospect Park. All right, so someone said this was a tight range. How many acres does Prospect Park cover? The answer, so this is actually evenly matched um, that people answered, and but the answer is 526. So for those of you that aren't familiar with Prospect Park, it's absolutely gorgeous. Ocean Avenue is just a few blocks from it. Um, so if you have not visited, please do, and you have 526 acres to walk through or swim through because part of it is water. Um, and then what year was Prospect Park designated a scenic landmark? The answer is 1975. Oh, Mark got it wrong, it looks like. <laughs> and those are... <laughs> so, so the question is, David, you swore you were gonna get all of them right, did you? Or did we lose David? I think we lost David. Ah, okay. All right, well, we'll get him back on. Um, so why don't, I'm gonna throw it to Mark of Citizens Bank and you know, go ahead and um, give yourself a little intro and kind of, I think people are you know, waiting to hear a little perspective on state of the market from you. Sure, uh, for an introduction, as I mentioned, I'm originally from Michigan. I've been in New York for 20 years. I've been in the mortgage business for 16. Um, the last three and a half with Citizens Bank. Uh, since I started doing this, I've spent most weekends with salespeople like those that you see on screen, working alongside them in their new developments. Um, so much so that I actually bought one uh, way back when. Um, so I've, I've survived the new development process and I highly recommend it. Um, but uh, that, that's the perspective that I'm coming from. Um, I do have lots to say, and, and I have plenty to uh, answer uh, about what's going on in mortgage world. We're alive in lending. We haven't really changed our guidelines much. Uh, you know, we're double dotting I's and double crossing T's, but we're still lending at the same level that we were pre-COVID. Um, and, you know, we have good confidence in our market and uh, we'll continue to do so, continue to lend at the level we do for uh, qualified customers. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. All There's right. Peter. <laughs> um, Peter? How's it going, everybody? I'm Peter Young. All right. I'm a real estate oh. attorney. Oh, oh. Sorry, Chi, um, Peter's you. introducing himself. Okay. Yeah. Should we jump to today or you want me to keep going? Go ahead, Peter. Okay. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. As I said, I'm a real estate attorney and 
the sponsor, the person who, who is selling this wonderful development, they have their own attorney. I'm more of a buyer's attorney. I'm here to get, to get to help you guys facilitate the transaction and get you into these units. Um, I've been born and raised in New York my whole life, from Brooklyn originally. My sister actually lives in that neighborhood around the corner from uh, development, loves it, it's fantastic. The park is amazing, and I'm dying to know if she got all those answers right. So that's, I did. that's, right. that's, I did. that's what we need to know. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, you're, I'm here to answer all your questions legally, what it takes to logistically. And like Mark says, you know, COVID, we're in a strange time, but the real estate market is still going. New York is its own weird animal. And, you know, use these experts, listen to what we have to say. And, you know, we'll guide you through. Everybody comes out on the other side and New York's New York. It really is its own animal. Um, so, Chi, uh, I'm sorry, David. Um, David, I, 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 yeah, I love right. him, lovingly call uh, him Chi. We've worked together for a long time. Um, so why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself um, and give us a little background and then we'll jump into the questions that we received. Sure. So my, my name is David Chi. I am an associate broker here at m and uh, I've been a licensed real estate broker for well over 10 years. Um, and much like Peter, I was born and raised in uh, New York City, born and raised in Brooklyn, actually, and actually not that far from here, four down with the parkway between East 2nd and East 3rd. So I know this area very well, uh, pretty much grew up around the park. Um, yeah, we're very excited to have you guys on board here and I'll be more than happy to give you a tour and uh, answer any questions that you guys have. Thanks. Thank you, David. All right, so that pretty much takes care of our introductions. Um, so I did want to jump into um, the questions that folks did um, answer, uh, that did ask previously when they registered. I did also want to make a note, time permitting, we'll also open up if you'll see there's um, a Q&A section for the attendees. Um, so assuming we finish up with the questions that were asked previously, we'll jump into some live questions that you guys are putting in your Q&A box. Um, so really, I think that the one question that kept coming up um, from folks was, you know, is it a good time to buy now? When is a good time to buy? Um, you know, and especially like for first time home buyers, do they wait? Do they buy? Um, and I think, you know, all of you probably have some, some good advice on that. Um, I'm not sure who wants to start, but that's kind of like a more general question that kept coming up. And I think that's a good starting point um, for this. I can jump in. Sure. So as I mentioned in my intro, um, I bought new development and the year that I signed my contract was 2008. So if people remember back, that was the beginning of the end of the financial crisis. And being in the financial services business, I pretty much wasn't sure if I was gonna have a job uh, because every mortgage company, bank, you know, people were just folding and falling over like dominoes. But because of the strange time it was then, um, and the fact that I was still paying rent and able to do so, and paying what I thought was an absurd amount of rent, um, I happened to see a new development um, that was listed by Tamara's company way back when, and I fell in love with what I saw and I made it work. Um, you know, it turns out that I had three different jobs in the next year before I closed. Um, but again, you know, the negotiations were a bit more in earnest. Um, you know, I was able to get what I wanted. I think the seller, you know, everybody walked away happy. You know, the seller didn't get exactly what they wanted. I felt I was overpaying a little bit. Whatever it was at the end of the day, I've been in my apartment almost 11 years now. I'm overjoyed. I absolutely love it. I love the neighborhood. And, you know, I took white, uh, advice from my dad when I was freaking out when it was time to go to closing. And, you know, I'm a loan officer. I couldn't get the loan that I wanted because, you know, I suddenly found myself in a unique position of not being a W-2 employee, suddenly becoming a uh, contractor for a few minutes because I had to figure something out. And I had to put a lot more down, but my dad said, shut up, write the check, you'll be really happy. And he was right. And you know what? 
everything seems to have taken care of itself. It's home base. And, you know, is any time the right time to buy? You know, the ingredients are, you know, are you employed? Um, do you have some cash? And are you paying, you know, something for rent that's costing you money? You know, we can help you balance that. So you're almost paying the same thing, sometimes even less, and you own the apartment. So never a bad time, but now I think is a unique time. And I think there's, you know, there's deals to be made. I think, you know, part of what um, folks can take advantage of, and I'm sure you can speak on this more, Mark, is the interest rates, right? So this is a unique time in terms of how low interest rates are, and that's something definitely to take advantage of. I'm old. I, I know I, I use a lot of Botox, so I'm not sure if you can tell, but when I bought my <laughs> first house 100 years ago, uh, Jimmy Carter had just left the White House. And when he was in office, the 30-year fix was in the 18s. So I bought a cute little tiny house in Ann Arbor, Michigan. My interest rate, I, I, it was the first year they invented adjustable rate mortgages. I was paying almost 10%. And I thought I was doing great because the 30-year fix was at 13%. Today, rates are in the twos and the threes. The, you know, we're talking like real twos um, to like very, very low threes for you know, certain jumbo loans or very high loan-to-value loans. But these are rates I've never seen before. And please take advantage of it while you can because it's easier to qualify for more payment when your payment is lower based on the interest rate being lower. So you can buy more. And now's a great time to take advantage of that. Lending standards, you know, you, you read a lot, but you know, then you can ask us. We have not changed our lending standards. Like I said, we're just being extra careful, but we're happy to make good loans to good people, people that you know, we think will pay us back, which is, it's formulaic. But rates, as Tamar said, are ridiculously low. I can't come up with a better adjective because I've never seen anything like this, so please take advantage of it while you can. Yeah, I think, you know, and she, you know, jump in. I think yeah. that's the point. If someone is kind of ready, willing, and able, um, now is the time people are taking advantage of rates, um, of potential deals, you know, to be had. And I, and I think, you know, maybe, you know, there are folks, of course, that have expressed concern and that came up too, you know, in terms of COVID, is it the right time to buy? Um, the, the sales market is still robust, right? Of course, it took a dip um, when the pandemic first hit, but um, things have really come back um, and come back with quite a vengeance. And I think also Mark made a point, or uh, Peter, um, that it's really, you know, New York is its own beast. Um, so if you're, if you're able to now, there now is really the time. Um, so any, anything else anyone wanted to add on, on that? I would, uh, I would jump in just for any first time home buyer. I'm a landlord and anytime you pay me rent, it's great for me, not great for you. So, you know, that question of a first time home buyer and I tell all my first time home buyer clients this, it's a great time right now. Because anytime you start putting money and equity into yourself, it's better than paying rent and putting it into that landlord's pocket. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a positive guy. You know, she knows me and the pandemic is crazy. It's a weird time. But if you could use that and be mindful, take a look at how much you've saved with a little bit of adjustments in what you're doing. That translates into you know, being able to afford a better apartment and, you know, your budget is better than you think. You know, even myself, you look that $3 a day on the coffee, the $5 a day on this, the $6 a day on that, it adds up. And now that you're home and, you know, if you're smart about it, start change, changing your budget plans and saving. Like Mark says, it's a pain in the ass in the beginning. You know, you, it'll, it'll freak you out, but Five years down the line, you're going to be thrilled. You're going to walk in on a deal. You, you, you realize you're walking on a deal. That's the other thing with real estate is it's a long-term game. You know, you're not buying a house. You're not buying an apartment. And you're looking to flip it and make 20 30% the next day. This is your home. It's going to be an investment. You're building equity. And you're building life. You know, that if you love your apartment, you love the house you're in. And like I said, Prospect Park, my sister lives around there. We grew up around there. It's... 
it's gorgeous. And if you could do that and take a little bit of your life and make it better, that's a hell of a lot better than Starbucks to me. So <laughs> let me be, how about the emotionless realist? Let, let me just give you an example. A $500,000 mortgage today costs about $2,000 a month payment wise. So with, you know, the monthly charges from say a one bedroom apartment, you're spending, you know, $2,500, $2,600 a month, $2,800 a month. I don't know how that, you know, compares to the rent that you're paying, but you can literally finance a half million dollars at $2,000 a month payment. It's very reasonable to do so nowadays. Yeah, I think we all know, you know, how, how high rents can potentially be in New York. And I think Peter makes a good point. You know, I think a lot of folks, are nervous maybe even to take the first step in calling someone like Mark just to even find out what they could afford because it could seem overwhelming. Um, but I think even take that first step to have a better understanding if they maybe changed small behaviors, um, this is really very feasible, especially right now. And that's really step number one is figuring out what you can afford and, and how you can make that realistically happen. And it takes 10 minutes, literally. I mean, and I'm a talker. It really takes five minutes. So to find <laughs> out, you know, to put yourself on sure footings or, you know, to make sure you're moving in the right direction, you might be, you know, pleasantly surprised what we tell you. You know, we'll tell you that you can afford too much in some cases. You're like, I don't want to spend that. That's fine. But that's what we say that you can afford if you wanted to spend it. And that way, you know, when you find an apartment that you fall in love with, that we're right behind you, we can do a loan for you. And it literally five minutes, 10 minutes time investment, you get the, you know, I call them the golden tickets, you know, if you saw Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, it's a pre-approval, it's all you need. And it, it's, it's literally the exchange of information, nothing more. Um, thank you, actually that leads a little bit into one of the other questions that we had. Um, it's a little bit of a broad question mark, so I'm sure you can make it a little bit more concise, but um, just in terms of what the loan process is, maybe you can just like take us through some steps um, of what someone can expect. Sure, it's actually very simple. I always say that the hard part is what you as a customer, a buyer, and what the real estate agents do. For us, we literally collect information from you we take that information, we review it, we issue a loan commitment, uh, we do an appraisal, we send out an independent third party to view what you're buying to make sure it's worth what your contract says. Once those two things, you have a, a loan commitment and the appraisal comes back in, Peter um, would send us what's called a, a title commitment and you close. I mean, so literally from you know, the first time we speak where you give us basic information, if you're moving forward, we send you a list of what we need. We need a couple of PDFs. In some cases, we just need a W-2 from a prior year, uh, pay stub covering 30 days of income, bank statements. We need two months of bank statements showing that you have the down payment and the closing costs. And we literally submit it. We get you an approval. You know, it's a little busy right now. We used to do two, three days. Now we're about two weeks. Um, but we send you an approval. The appraisal gets done in about 10 days. And within about two to three weeks, you're ready to go. Not that you close in two to three weeks, but it's literally a bunch of emails. There's not too much torture. If you're self-employed, it's a little bit more torture. We ask for tax returns. Um, in some cases, we ask for business bank statements because part of what uh, COVID has done, if you're self-employed, we just want to make sure that you might have really solid 2019 tax returns. We just want to make sure that you're doing okay this year. So just show us. Beyond that though, same process, you send us a few PDFs, we send you a loan commitment, we do an appraisal, the attorney sends us a title commitment, we're ready to close. It's, it's not, to, I know it, it, it sounds daunting and scary to some people, but it truly is a simple process. Finding a great apartment, I always think that's hard, you know, because you have a lot to choose from sometimes, but when you have a good sales team and someone to guide you, you know, then it becomes a little bit easier, but literally two week process. Okay, thank you. Um, while we're on Mark and financing, I might as well just continue with some of these questions. Um, so one of them, which is, um, 
like required credit score sure. and deposit. You know, I know deposit depends on a lot of things, of but just um, credit score too. So credit scores, um, everyone has like a minimum. Our, our minimum is 640, um, although we will go uh, a little bit lower with compensating factors. We'll go down to about 620. Um, there's a difference between a down payment and a deposit. And you know, real estate agents hate when I have this conversation with customers, but certain loan sizes, we let you put as little as 3% down. Um, you, you'll be asked for more when you sign a contract, but we will lend you up to 97% of the apartment's value and or what the contract says. Uh, if the loan size is 510,000 or less, we will lend you up to 95% um, if the loan size is 850 or less. So in theory, three or 5% down um, is all we require as long as you can carry the payments, we're good. Um, yes, but a lot of the times for, you know, and, and David, if you want to jump in for contract deposits. Very different. You know, right. 10%. 10%. <laughs> That's right. It's typically the, typically the standard, um, you know, actually, you know, in, in these times and we listen to, you know, 567 at 567 Ocean, We've heard some buyer feedback and we were able to, you know, adjust the down payment where you're doing 5% of the contract signing. And then within three months of your signed contract, you're doing the remainder, the other 5%, just to give um, folks a little bit more time to come up with that initial down payment. Um, and um, another finance question, um, I'll stop and, at some point, I swear, I will, I promise. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll get well, you're to You're the most that. important person here, Mark. I mean, you're the money guy. <laughs> this, this is where the- Maybe I just eye candy. That's right, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is where the bulk of the questions came yeah, in. Yeah. Um, so another question came in um, about FHA, um, if that can be used. And I know you have a response. Oh. Yeah. I always ask somebody who asks me about FHA loans and condominiums why you need an FHA loan because the program is truly designed for people with super limited or no credit um, or really, really low credit scores um, in like the, the sub 600, like the, the 500s. And, you know, it's a great program for first time buyers without question, but we have other programs that are more, uh, in some cases, affordable and more flexible than the FHA programs uh, are. And you know, if the monthly, if you compare the monthly payments, or if you're putting less, you know, if you're putting less than twenty percent down and you are required to get mortgage insurance, with an FHA loan, even if you put twenty percent down, you will have mortgage insurance on that loan for the life of the loan. It never goes away. If you do a conventional loan, a non-FHA loan, and you put less than 20% down, and you get to the point where you're at 20% equity, that mortgage insurance comes off. Your payment actually drops. Or if you accelerate the payments on your loan, or if your apartment increases in value, and you can show us as a servicer that your apartment is worth more and you have 20% equity, the mortgage insurance comes off on a conventional loan. On an FHA loan, it does not. So yes, they can be done-ish, but I don't know what the reason would be in a new construction condo. I, I, would, I would ask the question first to give a, a better answer. Okay, yeah, and, and you answered part of this actually. Someone said what the pros and cons of putting 10% down versus 20. So rates being as obscenely low as they are now, if you're somebody who is earning money, I mean, obviously if your money's sitting in a savings account, I'm a savings account guy, you know, you're making a half a percent if you're really lucky. But if you're, if you're making money in the stock market or you're doing something else with your money and the monthly payment is still reasonable to you with 10% down, um, it makes sense. I'm a fan of being in less debt. So if, the more you can put down, the merrier because people will remember you because they're really happy with their payment because that's what we are. We're the money, like you said, it. we're the mortgage, we're the money people. 
if you have a lower payment, you know, you might not be like one day if you're like, oh my God, I'm paying so much to live here. You wouldn't say that, you know, if you had a, a bigger down payment, like that, that's one thing I would never worry about. So it really, it just fits your situation. Um, if you're limited on cash, like say you just started, um, you know, in your position and you might have, you know, a great salary, but not a ton of cash, why not? Because like I said, you have to pay rent, you have to pay to live somewhere. This makes it, you know, granted the, the deductions have all changed um, with, uh, I don't even say the name of the act anymore. Um, but, you know, mortgage interest is tax deductible up to $750,000 loan sizes. Property taxes are tax deductible up to $10,000 per year. So if you still itemize, you know, there's a benefit. So I would have the conversation with the customer to see what works best for them. But money is so inexpensive right now that borrowing doesn't cost much that, you know, I in good conscience can tell people, hey, you know, if you're making money in the stock market or elsewhere with your money, not a bad time to borrow a little bit extra. Right. Right. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Um, so I did actually want to um, go back because we did have a few questions. Um, and maybe David, you can address these um, just in general about that were particular to this building, to 567 Ocean, and about mm -hmm. um, if there was if there were rentals or maybe medium income. So um, maybe, and actually that could that will lead into some of the other questions that we had about um, if there's a tax abatement. So maybe if you can just give a quick background on what the building is. Um, Sure. And like a few starting prices and then um, kind you of got it. In. So our building here is a brand new ground up development. There's 108 total units and we are a free market condominium for sale. All right. So we will not have any rentals. Uh, down the line, when people close, if they decide to ultimately rent out their own individual units, of course, there'll be rentals in the building, but that's not how we're handling it here. Right. So there's 108 total units, nine stories, plus a cellar. We'll have 54 individual parking spaces available for purchase and 48 individual storage units for purchase. Um, as you guys know, we are very close to Prospect Park and all forms of major transportation, right? We have express uh, train lines um, within you know, a block away. Um, the building right now is pretty far along. We anticipate closings to happen, you know, we're shooting for the first quarter of 2021. All right. So, you know, we're keeping our fingers crossed and, you know, believe it or not, we are, you know, on pace for that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the building is great. Uh, we have studios, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and a handful of three bedrooms. So with 108 total units, you know, we have a little bit of, of uh, you know, something for everyone. Um, and so just to jump to one of the questions regarding this particular building mm -hmm. um, was if there was a tax abatement. Um, there is no abatement right now. However, on the twos and three bedrooms right now, ownership will cover two years of your real estate taxes. All right. And um, I know sometimes sponsors are not going to want to hear this because we do represent the owner ownership. Um, but, you know, we'll take everything on a case by case basis. Okay. Um, so thank you. Yeah. So that helps alleviate, that's almost like a mini tax abatement yeah, um, a little bit. when um, the sponsor is willing to pay two years of taxes. Um, so we did have a question actually, what is the starting price? Um, so if you can maybe just give the starting price for um, like the studios ones and twos. Sure. Yeah, yeah, totally. So we have studios and one starting in the fours, you know, we have two starting in the, you know, mid sevens. And then, you know, at this particular point, we have really large top floor, three bedrooms with massive outdoor space. That'll be over a million. So like I said, I mean, for 108 total units, we have a little bit of everything for everyone. And all of these, both studios, ones, twos, we have different floor plans. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I said, there's a, a little bit of something for everyone. Great, thank you. And actually, so we have another question that was just asked uh, um, going into this is um, if there was a rent to buy program. Um, there isn't, and I think that um, maybe that would, like that's at the point where maybe Mark, you could speak on that. I would definitely suggest um, 
reaching out to a lender to see, because again, you may be able to, especially with rates where they are, afford more than you potentially think, right? So no, we don't have any officially rent to own, um, but there may be a loan program um, or product that um, a loan officer has that makes it work for you. Um, so that answers that one. Um, and we do have open houses by appointment, by the way. So you can always go to our website, reach out and contact us um, and schedule an exclusive showing of the mm -hmm. model. And then you can also have a hard hat tour. Um, okay. And then also, you know, we got some questions about the, you know, the neighborhood and the area. And I think, you know, uh, David touched on it a little bit, you know, just in terms of plans or what are our thoughts of the neighborhood. I think, you know, and again, you know, Chi, I'll let you expand on it. But when you think about real estate in New York um, and when you have a commodity such as Prospect Park um, just steps away and then an express train that also goes into Manhattan. Yeah. Let's um, go to the map. Let's go to the map, right? All that right, is really right. like, and so, that's really, right, so that shows you how close we are to the park. That's really ultimately and historically like a massive, massive commodity in terms of real estate. Um, and so once you have that, um, you know, we are one of the first developments of this um, caliber in terms of quality um, and amenities. So you can imagine, you know, getting in now, other resident, um, residential buildings will follow, then your commercial will follow. But again, like being at the hub and so close to, you know, the park and the train, it's huge. So I don't yeah, know. These guys, yeah, these guys, uh, the developer, uh, are all in on this particular area. I mean, you're free to look up their last project. It was called the Onyx, all right? So we're located at 567 Ocean Avenue. In 2018, they launched 2128 Ocean Avenue called the Onyx. And so these guys are active in this particular area. And, you know, developers build in areas for a reason. As Tamar said, you know, express trains, multiple lines, close proximity to green space. Um, it's very attractive. Um, just, from a, just from a side to jump in. Yes, please. My sister lives around the corner. She's on Prospect Park Southwest. The neighborhood is... It's phenomenal. You got everything there. You can't beat the park. You know, I've been it's doing true. it for, I've been doing this for over a decade, like she, and like David, and when you're that close to something with nature or any kind of outdoor space, it's like a built-in amenity that you really can't access anywhere else. So mm -hmm. Especially right now, right? Like yeah. that's, that's so huge to have the outdoor space um, like I mentioned earlier on the call, like Prospect Park is just gorgeous. If you haven't been, just go. Um, it's huge. And that's not going anywhere. And that's not, and, and the need and the want to be close to the park and transportation is always going to be there. So it's, in terms of like long-term investment, it's, it makes sense 100% from the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and for city boys like me and Dave, that might've been the first time we ever seen a horse. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. I think I was like 25 or something like that. <laughs> um, so we had a, actually, so this is an interesting question. I'm just kind of taking a look. Um, and this is kind of maybe for everyone. I'm not sure who wants to jump in. Uh, interesting question, which is um, a what are some common mistakes that first time home buyers make? Um, I would say, I would say one of the biggest things that first time home buyers may, may, uh, might be not asking enough questions, right? You feel like, you know, it's that old adage. There is no stupid question, right? If you feel like, don't be timid, you know, no question is stupid. It's a lot of money. It's a big investment. So you need to ask as many questions as you possibly can, you know, try to reach out to as many people as you possibly can. And then secondly, I would, uh, just to piggyback a little bit on what Mark said earlier, is, of course, purchase price is important. Don't get me wrong, all right? I'm not discounting that. But 
the monthly payment is the biggest thing I feel people should focus on. Um, of course, you don't want to overpay on anything, uh, but if you could afford that monthly payment and you're comfortable with the monthly payment, I feel sometimes the asking price is a little bit secondary. I, I think in my experience, what the biggest mistake I've seen is people not knowing what they actually can afford. I mm. think you, you're, you're really your first step in any kind of real estate endeavor and is to talk to Mark. Mm -hmm. Like you really need to sit down and talk to the finance guy. You may be, you may be under budgeting yourself and you may be over budgeting yourself. And you want to take those factors into what you can actually afford. And without having a qualified expert to tell you, you you're kind of poking around in the dark sometimes. And um, the second thing is when you're factoring in that those financing costs, just keep in mind closing costs. Like Dave said, ask questions. What what is like what is going to be my final number? You know, try to get an idea as to where you're actually going to wind up. And again, talk to Mark. You got to know what you're, what's in your pocket before you start walking around. You may, you may be looking in the completely wrong neighborhood. You could be looking at this building and you could be, you're looking at something much worse. Right. Right. Um, I'm glad you brought up closing costs because that's, that's a good point. Um, you know, definitely want to have an understanding of, you know, how much cash you need on hand um, to make the purchase happen. Um, uh, just as far as mistakes, like one thing I always, you know, told people was uh, I, 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 people that don't necessarily like commit, like, I, I think, you know, when, when you have that feeling that it's right, like that you love that apartment, but like, you're always going to find maybe some little thing that holds you back. And I feel like a, a big mistake people is passing up on opportunities again and again, and you're always going to miss out. It's just like missing out. Um, and I, like, for instance, right now, because of the rates, like you are potentially missing out if you have an opportunity to purchase. Um, so that's just like one of my things is just like, you know, listen, you're going to have to make some concessions here and there about like what it is you're looking for. Like maybe the apartment is 10 square feet smaller than you were hoping it was, you know, whatever it is, but to look at the bigger picture and make sure that you're not missing out on a really great opportunity that you're going to regret down the line. Um, you, you actually just touched on almost every one of my pet peeves. And, you know, I've been doing this, as I said, for 16 years and prior, um, I was in a related business. And the one thing I will tell you is I'm a customer as well. You know, I bought and sold plenty of my own houses and, you know, I've done, you know, real estate development stuff where I'm, I'm the seller. And when people come in with preconceived no notions, like Tamar said, like I have a budget. Well, it's good to have a budget, but if you have no idea what you want to spend per month, that dollar amount that you've assigned to how much you can spend is meaningless. I ask people what they're paying in rent. And if you walk in and you tell me that you're paying $4,000 in rent, and that's okay, you're comfortable with it, but you're looking in the $500,000 range. And I'll kind of look at you sideways like, huh? Because if you remember earlier in the conversation, $2,000 a month covers a $500,000 mortgage. So I always ask people, what is your tolerance? What are you comfortable spending monthly? Most people don't buy, I mean, you know, my father doesn't believe in leasing or mortgages. He pays cash for cars. He's never had a mortgage. My dad, there's three people in the country that are like that, which is fine. I respect it. I wish I could be like that. But I always ask people, you know, what's comfortable? If you're comfortable spending $2,000 a month, let's look at stuff in this press range. Oh, wow. Well, that's what your money will buy you. How much money do you have for down payment? You know, well, I only want an apartment that's 1,000 square feet. Okay, well, you're standing in 900 square feet and you must have said 14 times, wow, this apartment's huge. You know, it might have 10 foot ceilings. You know, it might not have a million walls or hallways and it feels right. Honestly, I look at people like, seriously, do you really care that it's missing or does this feel right? Like if it doesn't have enough room or if it feels small, great. But people that look at like, th there's businesses like the, the people that do statistics, I think that they're called actuaries that figure out how much to charge for life insurance rates. They look at tables. But when you're looking at an apartment, it's about how's the neighborhood, love the neighborhood. 
How's the apartment? Feels great. Love it here. Wow, I've got two bedrooms. I only thought I could afford one. Oh, it's got a half bath and a full bath? Wow, that's great when I have guests. We give you a number, you go find the place. It's always best to know the number first. So, you know, mistakes that first time buyers make is not knowing what you can afford, knowing that you have to have a certain amount of square feet, because honestly, I, when I look at this apartment that I live in now, I didn't know what size it was. I was just like, wow, I love it. And it, you know, that, that's, it's an emotional thing as well as a business thing. So many people have said, oh, it's the most important investment you're gonna make in your life. Sorry for swearing, I have to use the word, that's bullshit. You need a place to live. This is not an investment, it's your house. By the way, if you happen to make money when you sell it, like a lot of people do, that's wonderful, but houses weren't designed to be the stock market. They're designed to be shelter. It's where you have you know, families, raise kids, go to sleep at night. So the truth is, you know, because it has become such a, I mean, it's a New York obsession to talk about your real estate. Doesn't matter what level, what price, what everyone talks about their real estate. It's bizarre. You know, you, you go it's across. So true. No, but it's so bizarre. True. You go across the country. No one cares about this stuff. We're obsessed. <laughs> Great. So the reality is, though, the most important thing is being happy. And I always say this to customers. You know, everyone's looking for a deal. Well, okay, so you got to, you know, your shoes that you bought are on sale, but they're horribly uncomfortable. And you put them on, you're like, oh, wow, I saved like 50%. You wear them once and you throw them away. You can't do that with real estate because, you know, there's some exit costs and, you know, you can't sell it in a day. You know, they're, 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 you, you need to walk into a place and go, oh, my God. And if you do that and the stars line up and the numbers are right, and you're like, oh, I have this pre-approval that says I can pay this much. And you look at the monthly charges, wow, that's less than Mark pre-approved me for. So that, that, that's just how I feel about it. Never have preconceived notions, but at least know what you can pay and what you're comfortable spending. It's so true. Like when I bought my apartment a long time ago. I remember. <laughs> I um, walked in and I said, I want this apartment. And I really didn't know how I was going to make it work at that time. Um, I, I should have had a better idea of finances, but like it really just felt right. And you find a way, you know, to, to make it work. You don't want to miss these opportunities, especially right now. And I'm, I still am in love with my apartment. We're outgrowing it a little bit because I've had a family since then, but it's absolutely, um, you know, when it feels right, like it's the best decision, especially in New York. I mean, like you said, it, it, this is a, a different beast in New York. Um, you know, so, and, and actually a, a question we had was about, you know, how COVID presented challenges in the real estate market and about overcoming them. And I think like, listen, it, we all know what happened, you know, March, April. Um, but I think we've, we've already have been started to overcome those challenges and the, uh, people are buying and we're busy and developments are moving forward and construction is continuing and developments are launching. Um, so, uh, you know, things are on the right track, I guess, if anyone wants to add to that. That's just my little Yeah, tip. well, I mean, it, it's totally true. I mean, just to, as Tamara said, we've been on the market for the past, what, two months? Uh, long, longer. Well, we actually longer. like longer than that, July-ish. Ish, right? June, we, June, July. Uh, we're, approaching, we're approaching 20 sales. So, you know, is it the right time to buy? And, you know, that's a personal decision you're going to have to make for yourself, right? But, you know, people are definitely doing deals. Yeah, absolutely. If you just look at the, the history of New York, we've, getting, we've gotten hit a bunch of times. Sure so, have. Mark bought his apartment in 08 when the <laughs> world was going to end if you were in fact. <laughs> 9-11. I mean, terrible things have happened. 9-11. All those, you know, I, I, my, my family has property downtown in Chinatown. We took, a, we took a hit, but we stayed, and it recoups. You know, things are bad right now. Bad things don't last for everything, forever. Everything and changes. The market's going to readjust. And New York is, is, is not the rest of the country. We are, the, the real estate market here is a different animal. Everywhere else where you see dips, you, you don't tend to see that in New York and it rebounds a lot quicker. So, you know, 
everybody keep that in mind. And like Mark keeps saying, if you're comfortable, you got that number. And, and to answer Mark's question, why everybody's so obsessed and talks about buying and owning <laughs> their property in New York, it's because you own a piece of New York, man. That's yeah, true. You right. own a piece of New York. Yes. Who doesn't want to say that? I yeah. own a piece of New York. Yeah, absolutely. Go anywhere else in the country. He's like, yeah, I own a property piece of New York. Literally own a piece of New York City. Come on. Let me throw one in for you, too, because, you know, it's, it's all over the headlines. It's gloom and doom in the post. Everyone's leaving. Listen, I'm going to be the first to admit, you know, city has probably fewer dollars coming in. Um, we're going to go through a weird period because, you know, we got to figure out how to finance government, but it's happened before. And I think that, you know, there's too many business leaders as well as, you know, other folks in the government. We'll, we'll, we'll get it together. Um, but for everybody who's left, you know, who's threatening or, you know, who's left the city for, uh, literally green, green pastures and no city living. Um, there's somebody buying their place when they leave. I mean, right. my, my purchase business is insane. And it's across all boroughs, all price levels. Um, I'm getting pictures from, you know, ex New Yorkers, ex Brooklynites that have moved to Connecticut. One, one customer sent me a picture of a tree in his front yard and under it, it said, I miss Brooklyn. I, I, I literally was on the floor laughing and almost crying because they feel so out of place where they are. I understand why they moved. I do. I totally get it. But he just sold his apartment. You know, it was on the market for a week. So his family, they, you know, they did it for whatever reason. Some, you know, new family is moving into the apartment. So it's, it's a transitional time. But, you know, that means opportunity to me, especially, you know, we'll say it again with the rates. This is the 2008 moment that I saw when I was like, I don't think I'm going to see this again in my lifetime. I mean, you know, maybe now it would have been again, but, you know, rates weren't that low when I bought, but, you know, people were freaking out because they thought the world had ended, especially since we're a financial services driven city. And of course we ruined the world, people in my business. So it was a very bleak time for people in the city because, you know, the financial services industry was kind of asleep for almost two years. Um, so, in the interest of everyone's time, I did, that was pretty much the bulk of the questions that we received in advance. Um, and I think we got through a lot. I did um, wanna uh, offer folks an opportunity if they had like other questions that they wanted to shoot over to us in the Q and A. Um, and if there's anything else that you kind of wanted us to go over. Oh, I'm sorry, I did skip one question. Uh, David, this is for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. uh, is the HOA fee included in the maintenance fee? So maybe you can just clarify exactly. Um, sure. So in New York City, we call that, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, right. So HOA is, you know, commonly known as homeowners association fees, right? It's the monthly dues, if you will. That's something that you hear outside of New York City. In New York City and condominiums, they're generally called common charges, right? It's the same thing. Now, maintenance is for co-ops all right again we're a condominium so they're considered common charges all right so in common charges you will have you know your monthly fee to maintain the building you pay a separate tax bill all right whereas co-ops maintenance will you know add both your overall expense for the building and your your percent of common interest and the taxes together because there's one tax bill on the overall corporation if you will right um, so that's what it is. So end of the day, HOA, common charges, maintenance, all intents and purposes is pretty much the same thing. Right. Thank you. Sorry, I skipped over that. Um, just to, uh, just legal, legal wise, when you are looking at apartments, just you want to specify whether you're looking at a co-op or a condo. Yeah, totally. There's, there's different fees associated with each, each type of ownership. Um, the, the, the structure of it's going to be a little different. And like Dave says, they all, sometimes they play fast and loose with, you know, your common charge maintenance. But the big distinction is common charge is, is, is like an HOA fee, but it does not include your real estate taxes. That's right. No taxes. Whereas if you're in a co-op, it is when they say maintenance, it does include your 
tax, real estate taxes and the you know, common charge area for, for your, your shared equity in the, in, the, in the full building. So just mm -hmm. you know, things to keep in mind when you are, are looking at out there for different types of property. And there's some other distinctions that, you know, if you guys have questions, you can reach me offline about. Um, so I keep taking another look and I'm like, oh, I forgot that question. But now I think I've gotten everything that was sent to us previously. Um, but I don't see it, you know, I, I'm just taking a look at our attendees to see if there's any questions. I don't see any. Um, we're here, you know, I know everyone has probably like dinner to get to, but we're happy to answer a few more questions. Um, if you have specifically for Peter, for Mark about financing or about 567 Ocean in general, um, you know, we'll leave it open for a few more minutes. I wish I had more uh, Prospect Park trivia. Although I guess, David, I mean, who knew? I, like, I got I, it off to me. All right, answer your first question. <laughs> I don't even know, like, I, you clearly know about the park. Um, I took a couple of tours. Wildlife is um, is uh, is there is native to Prospect Park. <laughs> I guess we've got some birds. Ducks. birds. Some ducks. Some ducks. Yeah. <laughs> Prospect Park raccoons that aren't afraid of anything. That's right. There was actually a story the other day about some guy releasing eels into the park, and he got you know they're just looking for him right now. Yeah, that was, that was weird. Only no, in New York. Not, only in New York. There you go. Eels. Like, where do you get eels from? Um, okay, so, <laughs> yeah, where are you getting the eels from? That's yeah, very strange. Uh, if we don't have any more questions, um, maybe we can start to wrap it up. And then if, uh, you know, David, you kind of want to give a, a general kind of like closing. Yeah, listen, we're here pretty much. I mean, we're, we have office hours from on Wednesday, Friday, uh, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. So we ask that you uh, contact us in advance. We'll schedule, give you the full tour, of course. And then we have open houses, um, you know, Saturday and Sundays. Again, by appointment, uh, reach out to myself, uh, my colleague Una, who's not on the, on the uh, chat right now. But reach out to us. You can always go to 567ocean.com or mns.com to get a full understanding of what the building's about. But, you know, reach out to us and we'll answer any questions that you might have. Yeah, and just to wrap up, like really, I, I realized like one thing we didn't, I, I, I kind of touched on it, but just in, in regards to the building, um, you know, closing in the spring, which you had mentioned, um, offering the two years real estate taxes on our larger units. Um, and then just again, the caliber when you're talking about purchasing right now, when you have, um, you know, everything kind of lining up, which is a building close to the park close to transportation, tons of amenities, high quality with low interest rates um, right now, being able to take advantage of that, um, it all kind of makes a lot of sense. And if it feels right, and you're not gonna know if it feels right or not, if you don't, if you don't swing by, you're not gonna know if you can afford more or less, if you don't speak to Mark. Um, and of course, speak to Peter because the legal stuff clearly matters. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna need counsel. Kind of important, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of important. Um, so that kind of just like wraps up some of that general um, building info. Mark and Peter, did you have anything? I'm just checking that question and answer again. Um, like thank you for including us. Um, you know, happy to help. It's kind of a 24/7 business. There's really no office hours and there's no days off in our business. So we're working when you're working. You know, I always joke with people, if I'm awake, I can do your pre-approval. Um, you know, when I'm sleeping, I'm not answering the phone. But <laughs> we, we know we're, we're a commodity. So we make sure we're available to our customers whenever our customers need us. So, you know, don't hesitate to, to reach out if you have questions. Happy to answer anytime. Same here. Um, I love dealing with first-time home buyers. So especially if you're new to New York, you're new to the whole buying an apartment, it's a little bit of a different animal than buying a freestanding house, especially out of state. Um, I'm usually not employed out of, out of New York. 
not a lot of not, not a lot of other states use real estate attorneys. Um, but yeah, like, that's well, right. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. I that's a good point, Peter. Like people that are coming from outside of New York are yeah, sometimes attorney. surprised that they. That's right. It's all attorney based in New York. In New York, in, in, yeah. it's all attorney based. Everywhere else, it's title based, right? Yeah, title based, New York, it's it's all, yeah. Graphic contracts. That's right. Yeah. Which is why Peter's very important in this entire transaction. If yeah. you're looking to purchase, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the contract when you buy from a sponsor in New York, it's about sixty pages. Yeah. You buy something in uh, in PA, the contract is three pages long. Yeah, it's so, three pages. Right. Right. Good point. Thank you. Yes. You, you need a real estate attorney when you're purchasing New York real estate. Yes. That's right. <laughs> I'm always around weekends, after hours. I'm happy to have a conversation with anybody just to, so they can own a piece of New York like, like us. Right. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't see any other questions that came in in the Q&A. Um, so I think for now, um, well, this was fun. Um, I kind of yes, want to do great. it again. We'll see. Thank you. Um, do it again next week. Well, maybe not next week. But <laughs> we'll do it again. I'll figure out more trivia that David won't know the answers to. Wait, wait, wait. Answer them. Let's, let's, finish, let's end it with that. I mean, ask the questions. Let's see if I got them. No, I know oh, I but, oh, you missed it. You had, you had signed, you, your Wi-Fi crashed. Yeah, okay. So, American Gangster was the one movie that was not filmed in Prospect Park. So The Wolf of Wall Street had scenes there and so did the Smurfs movie. I'm only familiar with the Smurfs movie that tells you I've got little ones. Exactly. Um, Prospect Park covers 526 acres. It's gorgeous. Oh. Um, Prospect Park was designated a scenic landmark in 1975. 1975. Yeah, right. Who knows yeah. that? Why do you know that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that's that's so what happens you guys take the tour. Go take the tour. Buy an apartment here. Go take the tour in Prospect Park. It's wonderful. I mean, you have the parade grounds. You have yeah, the Botanic sure. Garden. There's a zoo. Yeah. I mean, there's the museum. It's, it's, it's really all incredible. So you're um, you do the turkey trot. It's a fun run. That's Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> and that Thanksgiving dinner. Thanksgiving 2021. Maybe not this year, but 2021. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So um, to all of our attendees, thank you. For thank listening. you. Thank you. Really. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. And, um, you know, please reach out to us or Peter or Mark with any questions. Um, and we hope to see you soon, you know, whenever we'll do another one of these. Um, and I guess we'll sign off. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you.